In this video we are going to discuss finite element analysis and loads and specifically we're going to show how we review the results when multiple subcases have been utilized. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. In the prior video we set up three different subcases and since then I've gone ahead and analyzed the model. You can see that we are here at the point where the program is telling me that the solution is complete and I'm just going to go ahead and say OK to that. At the point that I acknowledge that the analysis is complete, it's going to bring me into the results environment where I can then begin to interrogate what the stresses are in the model and what the displacements are. So again, for this particular analysis, what we have done is applied a bearing load in this model, right, in the minus y direction, and then we also have a horizontal load on it and you can see that we are getting some results on this model and what we need to do is take a look at the total damage to my geometry or total outcome of my geometry based on both of those loads as well as the independent contributions of the bearing load and the horizontal load so in programs that allow you to utilize different subcases or different load cases of course, in the results environment, there needs to be a way for you to examine what those different contributions or different load cases, subcases are. Here we are in Inventor Nastran in the results environment. And if we go up to the panel across the top, I can see that because I have named my subcases logically, that this is or these are the results of the horizontal load. So if I go to the pull down menu here, there I can see the three different load cases that I have. So let's take a look at total load to begin with. Give the program a moment to update to show us that result. And let's move away from the menu tree a little bit. There I can see that our result is 56 megapascal. So I'm just going to make myself a little bit of a note there. That's the combined load and we can see stresses throughout the geometry and maybe we'll take a look at that in terms of PSI or English inch unit systems and my results there are about 8241 PSI and then again because I set up different load cases or sub cases if I want to see just the contribution of one of the other loads then I just go to the pull down menu toggle it to one of my other sub cases this one toggling over to the bearing load case or subcase and there I can see what my result is and again if I change it to PSI there's what my results are as a function of the bearing load and you can see it's very similar to what the total is so that tells me when we go and I take a look at the horizontal load we would expect that our stresses for this one are much lower the contribution is much less of course it was a much smaller magnitude of load all right so right there we can see 39 megapascals and if we look at the stresses in English inch unit system there it's about 5754 right so that's the advantage of being able to set up multiple subcases is that you can look at different scenarios having just one run one single analysis and again I'm taking a look at stresses here but of course we can toggle into other things different results types all the different results are calculated for each one of the subcases so if you want to take a look at any of the other results output then you can certainly do that so there's the displacement contribution from the horizontal load of course we applied a z-direction load so we can see the max displacement is in the z direction and if we take a look at the bearing load that bearing load was applied in the minus y direction so we can see the distribution of the displacement as a function of the bearing load so pretty simple able to toggle through those different subcases and provides a lot of different information about the different loads that you've applied on the model